Greetings and welcome to our continued discussion on functions. In the previous video, we talked about how you can define your own functions and call them in your applications. In this video, we're just going to build on that in two significant ways. First, we're going to show you how you can return values from functions. Basically, how you can make functions that can give their answers back to your main program. And then we're going to show you how to package your functions into files that we call modules and how you can use those modules in multiple applications. To get us started, why don't we go ahead and review the previous lesson. Let's just create a function that calculates the area of a triangle. So I happen to have Thony up and running here. What I'm going to do is go ahead and just make my function. So the keyword for defining your own function is define. And then what I can do is just type the name of the function. So I'm not very imaginative, so I'll just say area triangle. And here in the parentheses, I put the parameters. These are the things that the function would need to know in order to do its job. So you definitely need to know the base and the height of your triangle. So that's, I'm going to separate each one by a comma, and I'm going to press colon. And at this point, it's important to remember that these can be treated like variables. I don't know what their value will be, but when this function is called, this variable will have the value, whatever value the caller gave to it. So here, I'm going to calculate the area. I can say area equals one half the base times the height. And then I can print out a, a little cute message, triangle area is equal to area. So if I was to run it right now, nothing would happen. Again, functions don't do anything until you call them. So let's actually call our function and test it out. We could say area triangle. So that's calling the function. And then now in the parentheses, I have to give it what I want the base and the height to be. So let's say I want the base to be 15 and the height to be 9. I can do that, press enter, and good. I get my triangle area, and that looks like about half. So I think we're good there. So this function is great if all we want to do is print the area of a triangle to the screen. But there are often times when we actually need to use the value that our functions compute to solve a bigger problem. Let's say, for example, that I just got a new office in the comp side apartment and the old one was a rectangle and the new one is a triangle and I want to figure out which room is actually bigger. Did I get gypped by the department? So we're going to write a program that gets the dimensions of the two rooms and then outputs which one is bigger. So let's just try to do it using the skills we already have. I bet you you can all write, already write me a function that calculates the area of a rectangle. So it would look something like this, right? We'd call the function maybe area rectangle and then it would need a length and a width, right? And then the area would just be the length times the width. And then we would just print rectangle, a nice message, area. So now I can actually test this function too, right? I can say area rectangle. And here I'm just going to say 10 by 10. That should be 100, right? So if I press play, exactly what I expect. That's great. So then, if we were to actually solve the problem, we would want to, for my logic design, get the dimensions of the rectangular room. Don't judge me if I misspell this. The, and then we're going to also get the dimensions of the triangular room. And now, we're going to compute their areas. The areas, and then determine which one is bigger. So these are the main steps of our program. So now let's actually try to do that. You should be able to get the dimensions of the rectangular room. Let's just call it, um, I'll make a new variable. I'm going to call it uh, old room length. And then it's going to be equal to float input. And then old room uh, width. And that's going to be equal to that. Now I'm going to make two more variables. New room um, base and then new room height. So my variable names might be a little weird, but I'm just trying to map it to ones that this is the rectangular room, this is the triangular room, all right? Now we can compute the areas, right? We can just use our functions. So to get the area of the rectangular room, I can just say area rectangle is my old room length and my old room width, okay. So that the area of my new room is area triangle of the new room base, new room height. An important thing to note here is that notice how the variable names don't match. So when I called 
area rectangle, I'm not required to give it a variable called length. I just have to give it a value for length. So the value for the length of the room is stored in this variable in my program. So I can give it this. I could have also have done like just given it a number had I known the number off the top of my head. All right. So now when I press play, I can go ahead and say, let's say my old room was a 10 by 10 and my new room was a 15 by 9. Uh, 15 by 10. All right. Which one is bigger? Well, when I look at this right here, I'm saying, oh, it's very clear. I can look at it and say 100 is bigger than 75. But what if I want the program to do that? There's actually no way to do it right now because right now, all your functions do is print the area to the screen. So your program never has a, an opportunity to look at that value and do something with the result. So that brings us to today's lesson, which is the return statement. In the return statement, we are basically giving functions a way to give their answer back to the program. Give it back to the, the part of the program that called this function. So the key word here is this return area section. And to use it, basically what you do is you call the function, but now you also have this variable. So this function call is the same thing we've been practicing since the previous lessons. Now we have a variable. And what's happening is anything that this function returns get stored in this variable. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say here, I'm going to make a new uh, variable called uh, old room area. And then I'm going to make another variable here called new room area. So now, if these functions were returning something, they would store the result in here, at, you know, in old room area and new room area. But these functions aren't, so I just need to modify them real quick. Area triangle, instead of printing out uh, the area of the triangle, it's going to return the area. The same thing here. Um, instead of printing out the area of the rectangle, I'm going to return the area. So now, when I press play, and I do the same thing, 10, 10, 15, 10, you don't see anything here, but if I go to view and variables, you will see that I actually have the old room area uh, is 100, and the new room area is 75. So now they're variables, and now I can write code that compares their values. So for example, I could say, if the old room area is bigger than the new room area, you could say, print, don't move, it's a trap. Otherwise, I could print, uh, nice, a bigger room. So again, if I press play, and I test, my old 10 by 10 office with my new 15 by 10. Oh no, the department actually didn't give me something, they just gave me a corner room. So, thanks. No, that's fine, they didn't really do that. The last thing we're gonna talk about in today's lesson is the idea of modules. So you can imagine that a function such as, uh, that calculates the area of a rectangle and a triangle might be useful in more than just this application. And it would be a shame if I had to keep writing this function every time or copy it and paste it every single time I wanted to use it. So what I can do is I can basically store these functions in another file. So it's really as easy as creating a new file in Thony, copying the functions over there. So we'll get rid of them here. And I'm gonna name this function something descriptive. So I'll call it area functions. All right. And then I will store it in the same folder as my code. My code's called demo. So now I have this file and this file are in the same directory on my computer. So what I can do now, this is now a module. This contains a bunch of functions, and if I ever want to use them, this is the same way as we do import math. I just say import area functions. And anytime I want to use that function, remember how you had to do like math.sign, math.cosign? It's the same thing. If I want to use area of rectangle, which is in this file now, right, it's right here, I just say area functions dot area rectangle. If I want area triangle, area functions dot area triangle. So now I have the ability, anytime I ask you in this course to calculate the area of something or do something with the area, now you have this file that has these functions and you can use them as many programs as you want. And you can see the advantage, right? This code I know works, therefore every time I use it in another application, I don't have to worry about that part being the part that's broken. So it makes my programs not only a little bit shorter, but it also makes uh, reduces the chances of me writing code that has some accidental mistake for one re reason or the other. And again, if I just do it, the same program, because here I'm calling the function that's stored in this module. You can see it again here. Here's another example. 
um, I wrote a package which you can download off of Canvas that has a uh, called bit conversion. It has functions for converting between various units, terabytes to megabytes, terabytes to bits, that sort of thing. And here, the key thing is that we assume that this file is in the same folder as your program. And then you can go ahead and when you call it, you just put the, the name of the module or the name of your file dot the function you want from that file. That's it. That's this entire lesson. Now you know everything there is to know about functions. Um, right now it's just really a matter of practice, getting used to how to create functions, how to return values, and how to design your functions so that they're reusable in multiple applications. This is an art, not necessarily a pure skill, so it's something that the more and more you code, the better you'll get at. So thanks for watching, keep practicing, let us know if you need help, so, and again, keep at it. You can do it. Take care. Bye.